do. Whether it's this, roll him over, finish with an arm bar. You're only limited by your own experience, and that's what I try to get across. Take the principle, put it to work for you with what you do. Whether you're doing karate, nimpo, whatever it is. Okay? Good, let's try this. I'm gonna do just a quick <clears throat> little review of what we did on these and just to kind of leave you with it and say, oh, that's what we were doing. In these seminars, you've got so many people doing so many things, you can overload yourself. So two or three techniques that you can maybe remember and try a few times, I think, is about as much as you can cram into a six-hour day of this insanity. So let's go over the first one, which was just basic lunge, step in, punch. Just deflect, catch. Drop him. Keep that control. He taps. Doesn't mean it hurts. He just does that because he's looking for sympathy. So. Okay. <laughs> Once more on the other side. Here, catch. Not back this way. That's done. This is done. But here we're going for that balance point. Drop. Move him over. Get him all the way over. Okay. Come down. Pin him. If this arm is up here, bring it up to the front. If he's here, just bend it, just like you happen to land here. Put your foot on it. Don't let him use it. Yeah. Tell me points, etc. Okay. Think. Second one we were doing. Where's my second uki? Where did he go? The little guy. <laughs> we were doing the rear grab from here, outside. From the outside, you may come in here, take it down to this side. Here, if you're going, finish to a downward pin and an arm bar, pressure point, or from the outside, grab. Um, other hand in this case. We came in here, boom, if he punches with his hand, Deflect, Metsubush, lock it up, Makikomi. Down, back, again, finish here. If he grabs both shoulders, oh, same thing, just here. Down. If he's strong and he's not weak, this might be difficult. So come in to it and bend your body. Cut. Take your option, which side you want to go to. You've got him here, you've got him here. A lot of other little tricks that you can throw in. Just a matter of what the attack is. Some of the schools do this makikomi from a chest grab. The principle is the same. You're hitting the radius on the arm. He's grabbing here. Just a chest grab. I think we got a ray. Here. OK. Got it. You're all pretty familiar, I'm sure, with a technique called shihonagi, nihonagi, four direction, two direction, takedown. There's many ways of doing it. One of the things that makes it a little different, maybe the way we do it as compared to others, or especially Aikido versus Aiki Jitsu type styles, is we put a little flavor into it, a little bind that kind of gets that guy up on his toes. So I thought we would try that today with one of the basic techniques that we do that's called Mairiote, which is a front technique from the kneeling position. In Hakoryu Jiu Jitsu, we start off by teaching people what are called waza. Waza is a basic technique just to master a principle. We don't do a technique for every possible attack there can be because you can never master 3,000 different techniques. Then you got to remember the number and the day of the week and all this. So if you can master 10, 15, 20 basic principles really well, then you can apply them regardless of the situation, which is a lot easier and a lot more effective than saying, I know 4,653 techniques. And then the guy says, do you know this one? He says, oh, that's 64. So it's, it's almost ridiculous. You can go to the, to the extreme. This is a basic waza to teach a principle that's a very important principle in jitsu type techniques. This is called Mairiote. We do this one from the kneeling. He would be standing. In this case, you're kneeling and he grabs both hands and he, as if you were going to kick with his right leg. First, you're going to do a block. The first thing I want you to remember is when he grabs, don't just let him take control. As soon as he touches you, you have to take control of the situation. And you do that sometimes with just something just as easy as this. The little finger side of the hand is really emphasized because this is the weakest part of your grip, this is the strong part. So there's a difference between what he's going to be able to do 
when he grabs me between just doing, letting him grab and kick and grabbing and now I've taken control of the situation. So you try to extend his arm and lock that wrist. In this case, he grabs and as soon as he grabs, I do this. If, if he continues and kicks, I block his kick, his own shin, with the back of his hand, here. Then I step up. Now here's where another difference occurs. Instead of grabbing way up here on his wrist, in Hakoryu we like to grab low on the back of the hand and pin his palm to the wrist. When you do this here, okay, it doesn't take a lot of power, but it pins that palm and even the slightest motion makes him move. When he's on his toes, he's ready to move. Once I've got him here, I'm using the little finger side of my hand. I get him up. When I pivot, I don't want a big motion like this. Aikido does that, which is fine, but Aikido is for the exercise, the sport, the spirit, etc. For self-defense purposes, you don't want to give a person that much room to get out of a technique. So when he's here, in close, lock, when you pivot, here. Now you don't have to catch him this way, but here just drop your elbow. When he comes down, take this index finger, tuck it right here, and use your body weight. You don't have to use a lot of strength. In Hakoryu, we try to let the body do the weight. I only weigh 146, 47 pounds. So if you take that, straighten your arm, and lean on him, you've got it. There's a lot of other applications and pins which you've seen today. These are kind of, eventually you'll do what you like. You probably know 50 different ways to finish this. The most important part is what I'm trying to get you to take advantage of the situation off the bat. Let's try it on the other side. Again, I'm here, he grabs. Let's uh, come with this way. First thing though, as soon as he grabs, I don't just leave my hands here. I open, lock him, take these fingers out. Now block him, in close, here, okay? Some people are very flexible in the wrists. It's understandable. So if you can't get him with the little finger side, then rotate your hand, index finger up. He'll go one way or the other, I guarantee. Okay, so you've got him up. Pivot, keep it close to your head, here. Just drop your elbow, he's down, Index finger, tuck it here, and just lean. From here, there's options that you can pull out, okay? But this pressure point, are you familiar with this point at the base of the ear, the SCM? Oriental medicine is called triple heater 16, right here. It's a good point. It's the old sleeper, King Kong Cashy sleeper point. So it will put you to sleep if you do it the right way. So when he's here, the knee is on his ribs. You don't want him this way, because he can reach you here. He's got feet. So get him on his side. Minimize his access. Here, and just hold him. This is just in case you slip out. Or if it's the fifth time he's bumped into your car today, you go, wham, you've got had it. So, okay? Once more on this side. Another thing, if he grabs and pulls very hard, I can be gone. So it's very important, as soon as he touches me, to take him out of the picture. Now he's pulling with just his thumb and his index finger. Lock him, in, pivot, down, here, here. Okay, any questions? Go easy, don't crank it. I know you guys are tremendous ukes in here. I've been watching you fall all day. But what I want you to avoid just because it can be injurious, especially if a person's not ready. This is a tough shot for the average person. It's a great throw, but you gotta train to take this. And you're all good students, but I don't wanna, and it's not always necessary to do that. He can be here, and I don't have to fight. All I have to do is drop my elbow, and he falls down. Go boom, here, okay? So don't crank it, just get him up, Little finger side of your hand and drop your elbow, okay? Good. Want to try one technique? I know this is a little maybe out of line for what most of you are doing, but it's worth taking a couple of minutes to try to learn it. It's kind of fun. 
You probably heard the term Gakun, which is used in Hakoryu, Aiki systems pretty much. It applies to either a bending of the wrist, and at the higher levels, it's actually a grip with a pressure.